There's one. Well, you join me now as I'm going to show you how I am going to um, make the sale or make a sale for this. It's a fiddly job. Oh, I have to say, and you're going to need a needle. You're going to need a pair of scissors, which I found a pair of scissors, which is cool. Um, you're going to need a dry wet wipe. I dried out wet wipe, which I did earlier. And then you're going to need to measure the shape and size of your sail that you're going to attach. Now, wet wipes have two distinct um, traits. One way they're stretchy, and one way they're not. Well, the way I'm using these is I'm going to keep the not stretchy as horizontal and the stretchy as my vertical. The reason is I can then stretch it and make it shape it so that I can um, make it look like it's billowing at a later date. And my sail is going to sit in there. Is it the right way up or is it the other way up? Where did I cut this? Um, yep, I cut it right. That's it. And that's where it's going to sit. It's going to sit in there. Now, as I said, you're going to need your needle. And now I'm going to embarrass myself by trying to <coughs> feed a piece of cotton through that needle. Now I've found some thinner cotton and the cotton I've been using for the rigging. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Um, if anyone knows of an easier way of threading a needle, they can let me know. But anyway, there we are. And I'm going to double it up. And because let's put an end here because I don't know how long I'm going to be. Uh, doing this how long it's going to be I'll give myself a half arm's length of doubled cotton on here to give me a start now unlike my normal sewing for this sewing I am going to start off by and this is going to be so fiddly I can just tell what I'm going to do is I'm going to loop it onto here first. So I've got a starting point. I'm not sure whether you can see that now. Can you? No, I don't think you can. Hold on. Let me just adjust the mic so that you can see what I'm stitching. I'm going to be stitching here. Yeah, that's in shot, isn't it? So, yeah, so what I've done is I've just looped it and tied it there. So I've got a starting point, and I want that down as far as it will go. To my another piece of canvas, right? So I've done that. Decide how it's going to hang, and then I start. 
Now this is a going to be a very loose stitch. Um, and as I said, it's going to be fiddly. But I'm placing these these loops about five mil apart. So each stitch is about five mil apart. And I'm letting it hang. Because I don't want to pull it tight. Because I want it to look, when I've done it, like it's billowing. And, you know, the rope work is nice to see on a boat because sailing boats are all about the knots and the ropes. But this, as I said, is fiddly. It really is. And you will find that your cotton doesn't want to play the game that time. And it's at times like these that the old glue gun comes in handy because you're not actually going to be. I've just touched it so that it sets after a loop. Now I hold the loop hopefully in place while not being. every stitch you put on you will find it wants to ride over the stitch before the idea is to keep them as separate as you can doesn't matter if it's too messy but yeah you want to keep them as separate as you can And I can see me cheating even more and putting glue dots on all of it. But hey, that's me. I am going to do that actually. I'm going to just. And basically, it's the very tip of the glue gun. It's at times like these, I wish I had a glue gun that um, I could turn on and off at will. But I don't. I have this glue gun. So unlike regular stitching, there is a bit of cheating going on. No, I say cheating. The seamstress will be swearing at me right now. But yeah, I'm using glue to keep my roping apart. Because as I said, I don't want it. Now, I suppose if I was really clever, I could knot this. And yeah, I could, but I want to. And this could be done with super glue. You don't have to use a glue gun. I just happen to have a glue gun and no super glue. If I had super glue, I'd probably be doing this with that. But I like the glue gun for certain reasons because it's um, it's good for filling holes you know but yeah there we go another five mil and yeah and that's what i'm going to do i'm going to continue stitching this top piece on like this can you see how it's sitting there I'm glad. <sighs> yeah. 
So I've taken to calling my camera my little one-eyed friend because we're spending quite a lot of time together, me and my camera. Of course, when I was explaining to my friend online about me and my little one-eyed friend, well, you can imagine those of you with a well, you know. Stay there, fella. Stay there. Stay there. Yeah, eventually you get something that looks quite nice, quite aesthetically pleasing. Too much there. Oh, I want to dabble. Yeah, the problem with glue guns is if you leave them on too long, they melt all the glue inside them. So when you go to push it, the glue that comes out is like molten, mate. Not just liquid, but molten. So you really have to be careful when using a glue gun for a long period of time. what I might invest in or actually go and have a look for is a little extension lead that has a switch on it that way I can turn it on when I need it and then when it's feeling like it's a bit warm I can turn it off and give it a rest because I tend to um, kill most of my uh, glue guns this way yes None, none of the glue guns that I've um, exploded, destroyed, melted can ever say that I didn't work them because I did and I use glue gun glue for all sorts of projects um, it's very good the white glue sticks anyway are very good at mimicking bone and cartilage in the making of horror models um, horror props I found and I know there are better materials out there but glue gun glue is you know was abundant and makes for a A good support for that kind of thing um, in looks not quite in texture for dried bone but for wet bone bone that's still inside it's very good for that mimicking that it looks nice it looks quite cool there we go and Looks like I've pulled off one of my things, that's alright. I can stitch it, stick it back on in a minute. You're going to find a lot of that as you're building the thing. There will be bits you catch. And you'll go, No, I didn't want to do that. Don't fret about it. It just is what it is. looks like I might just have enough of this not a bad guess Joe of course you can do as many as or as few loops as you want it can be as Creators, if you like on this, because I said before, it's a fantasy job. Now, I'm going to put that one there before I go any further. 
and go through the metal ring at the end that I made that you saw me and back up myself to a hitch and got a little blurry and push that backwards through there sharpen these obviously not very well and then pull that tight so that's attached there we go and just a bit too much there take a bit off just keep it in I that in that down rope because I can. There you go. And there we have the top of the sail stitched on. How's that? Now, something different is what I'm going to do for this bit. Now, I know sails, lots of sails, run up and down on rings. So, I have some jewellery rings, but you can make these out of any wire if you wrap it in around a round thing about twice the size of the roundness that you want, as in the thickness of the, the, um, the rod you got. And then, because this stuff has holes in it, Again, I said, this is going to be tricky, so I'm going to do, I'm going to start with the bottom one, I think. I'm going to pull it in. I will push it through. If it will go. It's not playing the game, Jeffrey. Need something to help. That's it. No, it isn't. Okay, so the plan is to feed the sail through into the ring and then pinch the ring around the sail, which is all well and good if the ring plays the game. So I'm doing this with my fingers and my fingers are very clumsy. So failing fingers. I'm going to tools. So come here, thank you. Except this kitchen facing in the right direction. That's it. And do that. Oh, and pinch it. And I'll pinch that a little hard. Which I didn't want to do. So back out here, bugger. Okay, so. What I will do is I'll put half a dozen of these up here. Um, these rings. Now the rings are these. These little, uh, where are we? These little um, these little rings. I've got them on uh, eBay. Um, and they're for, um, well, for jewellery making. I'm not making jewellery, obviously. But I am blinging up my boat. I oh, know, oh, bad, isn't it? And I'm using the tools I have to hand to do it. 
the best I can. But it's a fiddly job and no mistake. So, yeah, my plan is to put about half a dozen of these on here. If it carries on the way it's going, there's only going to be two. Now, that's on, but I don't like it, so I'm going to add a little incentive to stay in one place. And there we have a ring. Now, the plan is to put one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe seven of these things on. Now, you can make this stuff. As I said before, you can make this stuff by getting any bit of wire, any bit of thin wire. You can even use electrical wire. If you, um, and basically, get yourself a a stick which is approximately twice the width, probably a paintbrush thing would do just as well, but you want you really want something that's uniform thickness. Screwdriver. Screwdriver's a good way to go. Yeah. Don't use a flathead, use a use a um, a Phillips because the flathead gets wider at the bottom here and you'll ruin all your rings. But the idea is being if for argument's sake, because I've got no wire, but I have plenty of cotton. So just to show you so if this is wire what you do is you wrap your wire round and round and round and round and round, and round this pull it all in tight together and you end up when you pull that off with a little spring and then what you do is you take your cutters go into the spring and just go snip and that will give you as many rings as you went round hope that tip helps I on the other end am a cheap cheap and I went out and I bought some rings because it saves me having to twist my own And I put it in place and I stick a bit of glue on the end. So all the where I want it. And that's it. So you can see how it's coming together. I think you can see how it's coming together, can you? Yeah, I can see how it's coming together. And it's really, really tiny. Don't lose your needle, you're gonna need it for all the other sails when you get to put them on. And I'm only putting this sail on for now just to show you what I'm doing because I needed a video for today and this is my video for today um, and what I will be doing is um, carrying on rigging up the spars and putting on all the the other bits it's, uh, you know it's like adding jewellery was uh, one of my friends said to me, it's nautical bondage, mate. <laughs> so, yeah. Ship's rigging boiled down to nautical bondage. Yeah, okay. I believe you. He's a good lad. Art's in the right place. So, there you go. So once I've got all the rings on there, see what I've done to the top here, I will do that at the bottom. And I'll loop it round this bottom one. And this edge, I will leave free. And the reason I'll leave this free is because it needs to be able to billow. I need it to shape it, but that'll be your sail. Yeah? Okay. So yes. So... that's where I'm going to leave you today um, I'm going to uh, 
going to uh, carry on doing this um, and stick some photos of the finished article on my Facebook page, which I haven't got any links to, funny enough. But I will it, when I remember and figure it out because I'm still figuring out this YouTube stuff. It's not straightforward as it looks. Either that or I'm just old and a technophobe. No, I won't say technophobe, I'd say techno. Uh, challenged <laughs> okay yeah I've been alone too long I'm starting to crack myself up but yeah but I'll continue this thing all the way up I'm not sure whether I should leave just leave the video running Lee or what I'm doing I think I might just do that and carry on regardless because me and my one-eyed friend over there, no innuendo, it's just nice to have the company, even if it's only pseudo company. For an hour. And it will give me something to talk about with the wife when I go indoors and start sorting things out for her. Um... And she can tell me what she's been watching on the telly, or if she's up to it, what card she's been making. I think at the minute she's actually making, or trying to make, she's been working on it months. A um, baby book. I think that's what she's making. I might be completely wrong there. Yeah. Because I'm a bloke and I don't bloody listen. <laughs> it could be an address book for all I know. I don't listen. Yeah, keep it quiet. It's supposed to be a secret, I think. Probably, uh, just let the cat out of the bag. But I'm saying no more. My lips are sealed. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I will deny everything, but it's all right. I think I'm safe. Uh, uh. I've only got 11 uh, subscribers and I think the average for someone watching one of my videos is about four and a half <laughs> minutes. <laughs> I think I've watched more of my videos than other people have to be honest. So I'm not too bothered. Oh, it's, my videos aren't there for everybody else, they're there for me. Although, you know, if you find some, uh, if you find something in them that you're enjoying, and you're watching. Thank you. It's nice to know I'm not talking to myself. Or at least for the first 10 minutes. Of any of my videos anyway. Well, four and a half according to Google. Or uh, YouTube or whatever it is. Yeah. And I'm, you know. I'm amazed they stay around that long. But yeah. So I think I'm pretty safe at the minute. In my video. I can't see them going viral very anytime soon. Oh well. Oh no 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 no! Don't start cutting. That's better. Put you in there. 
that's the thing see I've put on other strings and everything to hold everything together and now that I'm adding the sails <laughs> they're getting in the bleeding way but that's all right we can go up with it we have eyes And again, so what have we got? One, two, three, four, five. All right, might be eight. Might even be nine. I don't know. We shall see what we get up to when we get up there. See, the idea being that one of these ropes I've put on. As an explanation, the explanation is right. I have a rope here. It goes up here to a pulley, comes down and attaches down here. This rope is the one that pulls that spar up and down. These slide up and down, which collapses that. The whole thing will be wrapped on that when it's not at sea. This is my thinking. And the two spars will be wrapped together and they will collapse together okay hence the reason this rope here is here this rope here is also here because it holds, hold, helps hold the tension between your tiller ropes and the tiller ropes are the ones that move it from side to side and tie it off to keep the wind going um, and they'll be in constant movement um, depending on how good your your pilot is sort of thing and if he can tack into the wind properly and get that rigged up right, then fine. But there's a there's a difference between tacking into the wind and any um, sailor will tell you there is a difference between tacking into the wind and and over tacking and ending up with flat sails, losing your momentum. Or worse, having yourselves below the wrong way and stop you dead. Um, I shall leave that there because I want to add a rope to that. So anyway, there we go. So that's my reasoning behind the way I've done this. And these rings help it slide up and down. Simple as that. And you'll see them on modern sailing ships as well. In olden sailing ships, I think they did that with ropes. But I don't know, they might have done it with iron rings. It's possible I've seen it with iron rings. Most of the stuff that I'm doing, I've seen somewhere. I can't tell you where I've seen it. Um, because I had a misspent youth. And my memory ain't what it was. But, saying I had a misspent youth, I don't regret any of it. Well, I didn't regret any of it up until this COV thing. But that's another story. Up until that point, I was quite happily not regretting anything but now well, now it's a case of if you hadn't smoked me and you hadn't worked in a foundry your lungs wouldn't be food bar and you wouldn't be on your wrist fin but then there are healthy people falling down with this stuff so yeah there you go <laughs> i need to stay in it for more i think i'm not saying that she'd be lost without me but things would be a lot harder for her
So there we go. How's that? How's that look to you? How impressive is that? So yeah, all I need now is to tie down my sail there. And then I'll probably figure out a way of making it below and stay below. But the beauty of this stuff is it stretches. And when it's stretched around something, round or something like that, it tends to keep that shape. It doesn't seem to have a lot of memory for going back to the way it was unless it's wet. And I intend to keep it very, very dry. If I could help it. <laughs> Which is kind of ironic considering I'm building a ship. <laughs> but there you go. Now, debate Jeff. Do you stick that back where it belongs? Or do you leave it off and carry on regardless? And then stick it back on after. Or stick it back on after. It's not in the way at the minute. So there we go. Look at that. One sail almost completed. Um, again, I had a needle. And you know what I'm saying? Put it down, don't put it away. Or put it away, don't put it down. I always get that mixed. <laughs> and I'm sure I'll get swore at. Well, I'll get swore at for a lot of things if my missus watches this video. I'm sure. Let's keep it a little secret. Anyway. So yeah, again, I'm going to go for the embarrassment of trying to feed this through here. Uh -huh. I'm getting good at this lark, you know. So we have roughly what we want. Get some scissors to cut it. Now, when I tie a knot in this, when I tie a knot in this, what I do is trick me name taught me. Lick your fingers. I know it's bad moving this day and age, but lick your fingers. Pinch it. Roll it around your finger. And then twist the two together. And pull. You end up with a knot. How clever is that? And again, what I'm going to do, but this time, I'm going to start from this end. And I'm going to move it to a position that will make it easier for me to feed it through. For me. So, what I shall do is... I shall just loop it very simply. And it's going to get caught on everything because it's because the wood I used isn't sanded in any way, shape, or form. But I'm going to loop this first bit there just like that. Yeah. Okay. And again, here we go. Now. Another trick my name used to say was, you're better off using little short bits of cotton than long bits of cotton. But I've got a finite amount of coffee, cotton. So, I don't want a lot of little scrap ends if I can help it. So I'm making a long piece. So I don't have to cut it several times. As opposed to Nan would make lots of little short pieces and stitch like that because and it, it's it's good theory it, it's good practice as well um, because if you if a thread goes on a piece of clothing that you're making if you're using short threads to stitch it you are less likely if you snag a thread to have the whole thing come undone um, because you've used a little bit of thread there, 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 a little bit of thread there. Those little bits of thread all hold separately. And you tie them off separately, so they're each individual little knots. 
modern clothing is made on a machine, run through a machine. It's great, it's brilliant. Um, and then at the end, it's backpedaled to tie it off to literally not like, you know. But if you snag that anywhere along that scene, the whole thing will unravel eventually. Whereas with me Nan's method of sewing, and she did everything by hand. She very, very rarely used the machine. And if she did use the machine, she'd go through miles and miles of cotton for that reason. Because she'd go forward an inch, come back half inch, go forward an inch, come back half inch, go forward an inch, come back half inch. You knew that thing was staying together regardless. Um, and that's how she used to sew by hand in short little pieces. I do miss her, I must admit. Um, she um, is a wonderful lady. I might have spoken about her before. Um, but she was, she was a wonderful lady. She never had a bad word about anyone. And I mean it, she never did. She never had a bad word about anyone. And she put up with a lot for her life. She really did. Um, and there are always certain times of the year that I miss her. When the flowers come up, the first flowers of spring, I miss her. Because she used to love her spring flowers. Matter of fact, she used to walk up the street. Pinching a flower here and a flower here out of different people's gardens. <laughs> she'd come home with a full posy. And the full posy, you'd go out and you'd think, so that's when Nan got that one. Oh, and that's when Nan got that one. I know she used to ask before she took. So it wasn't actually pinching. And I know she used to ask because there was a lady down at the end of the road that used to have... It wasn't a lady actually, it was a, there was a lady and gentleman had the most beautiful roses in their garden. Nan never came back with one of them. And I know why. Because even though they had beautiful roses in their garden, And they had abundance of them. And they were people that kept themselves to themselves. Very rarely opened the front door to strangers. When I was a kid, I used to do uh, I used to do what people are doing now because of the virus, which was go around people's houses that I knew were on their own or old or whatever and offer to go do shopping for them or whatever. I was a really helpful youngster. Even though I was a bit of a thug, I was a really helpful youngster. Um, and it didn't bother me whether, whether they offered me any money for it or not. Um, it was just something, again, something my nan used to do and I picked up the habit making sure my neighbours were okay. Um, whatever. Um, I never actually got out of that habit. I still like to check in on my neighbours from time to time, see if they need anything. Even those that are quite capable of getting it themselves, if I'm on my way out, I'll say, I'm on my way out, do you need anything down the shop or whatever, if I see them. Um, because it's a neighbourly thing to do, it's a nice thing to do, it's the right thing to do as far as I'm concerned. It's just me though, I think. Um, sometimes I think I'm in a minority of one. Other times, I see the good deeds that other people do for other people. And I think, you know what, I'm not alone. And I'm not alone. People do good things for people all the time. Just don't hear about it so much. Good deeds don't sell papers.
So yeah. Someone said to me once, we are predispositioned to seek out bad news. I was like, do you know what mate, I think you're right. I think we are. And then he went on to explain this, due to that Neanderthal brain, we're always looking for danger. And ways to combat it and that's why we are predispositioned towards bad news because we're always searching for that thing that's gonna kill us if you've got this far in my video you can tell I'm mumbling again and rambling and talking yeah Probably out of track, but you know, it's just stuff that's been told to me or over the years that stuck in this head of mine. Or some, you know, quite intelligent people. Unfortunately, those really intelligent people that have told me these things, um, when it comes to relaying those things, I'm not so intelligent, so. Um, I uh, tend to get my facts mixed up sometimes. But it's not always. But sometimes I do. And if I do, I apologise and move on because, you know. You don't learn nothing if you don't make mistakes there. Yeah. Hey. As my man used to say, you learn nothing by being right all the time. Wise lady, my man. And it's a sentiment that's been echoed by friends through the years. So. So, what do you think? Hey, you think? Right, so I want to drop that through that loop if I can. And then come back on myself through this loop. And do a hitch if the cotton will let me do it. You know what? I'm not too worried. It's just going to be another rope I'm going to add to it. Yeah. No, I think I'm going to go again. I'm running late. <laughs> Through the loop that I made before. I'll throw another loop and hopefully that will tie that off nicely. And I shall snip that. And I shall run that down an existing wall rope. Assistant rope. That one. That one. No, that's it. No, assistant rope. Yeah, that's it. And I'll just. 
sini nih. Tidy up like that. So all I've done is fed that piece of string that was dangling into another piece of string, which I'm going to do with this bit as well. That's it, just like that. Just makes it pretty. And there you have it. There's my sail now. Obviously, it's at this angle because I've made that one longer than this one. I'll show you. That one's shorter, that one's longer, so the wind will be blowing. Let's push the feed forward. So what I'm going to do is, very carefully, stretch the sail in the right direction. And there is my sail. Well, I hope you enjoyed this as much as I have. Be good to each other. Stay safe. Love you all. Bye now.